back to LA Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk. It's been a while. Um, today we're going to discuss LEDs, um, their impact on corals, uh, and then we're also going to dive into a lighting upgrade on my big reef. So let's start with, you know, we see a lot of beautiful corals in reef tanks. Um, you see them in pictures from frag sellers and other stuff. And what people often overlook is the fact that a lot of these colors that we see in these pictures or in our reef tanks are not necessarily the colors you would expect to see from these corals if you saw them in the ocean. Um, you know, very often the corals that we see in our tanks, if you see them in the ocean, they're much more drab looking. They don't have these crazy neon colors or the reds or the greens or the purples and other stuff. It's much more washed out. Now, it's true that nutrients in the water um, and, and feeding, you know, obviously will help with coloration in corals, but one of the big impacts when it comes to coral coloration are the lights. Um, you know, people believe in T5s, metal halides, and other lighting technologies. Um, they all offer different coloration for coral. Uh, what you see under one light may look completely different under the next light. Now, of course, we've had this big craze with LEDs, and LEDs have come a long way over the last 10 or so years, or several years anyhow, since um, LEDs first became popular. And when we first started out with LEDs, you typically had a combination of white and blue LEDs, or royal blue LEDs. Um, corals get most of their photosynthetic radiation from the bluer spectrum from 420 to 460 nanometers. So from a growth standpoint, the bluer lighting is really what the corals use the most for their photosynthetic radiation. Uh, white lighting is what gives us the perception of brightness. Too much white lighting will tend to induce nuisance algae growth. So most reefers tend to keep a little bit bluer spectrum. It also helps to make oranges and green colors in the corals pop. Uh, in our case, um, we're going to be doing an upgrade on my tank. And one of the reasons that I have chose to pursue this upgrade, and I've had a lot of good success with my LEDs. Uh, if you followed my tank or you followed LA Fish Guys over the years, you know that I've been running Kessel 360WEs. So my corals have responded very, very well to those LEDs. Uh, sometime back I got a uh, strawberry shortcake colony that I put in my main display and it's an Acropora. It's been growing very, very well. Um, if you look at the colony in my main display, it's kind of a beigey color with a uh, kind of reddish color polyps. Well, sometime back, again, if you followed LA Fish Guys, you know I set up a frag tank. And I took a frag of this strawberry shortcake Acropora and put it in my frag tank under different lighting. And it happens that in that tank I have these GHL Mitra LEDs. Um, they're the LX7s, and when I put the tank in that, or the, excuse me, when I put the frag in that tank, I immediately notice a complete different, different difference in coloration. Um, my otherwise kind of beige and kind of pink polyp coral turned neon green with bright red polyps immediately. It wasn't a matter of adjusting, it was simply a symptom of lights. Um, unlike the castles where you pretty much have a blue to white shift, the Mitras, as well as many other high-end LEDs, have a wider range of colors. You've got blue diodes in there, you've got royal blue, you've got different shades of white. Um, some of them have red diodes, and in the case of the Mitras, they even have green diodes and UV diodes, each of which is on its own dedicated channel that you can control individually. So, when adjusting LEDs, you can actually go in and tune the different channels to impact the coloration of the corals. So. After seeing that uh, one frag under the, uh, under the mitras and um, seeing the way my other corals responded, I made an executive decision to do a lighting upgrade on my tank. So today we're going to dive into um, the new lights, we're going to talk about the new lights and then we're going to dive directly into setting them up on the new tank. We'll talk about actually doing the setup through the software and controlling the lights. So join us now as we move forward on a major lighting upgrade. All right, welcome back. So, as you see, we got a stack of GHL Mitra LX7s. Um, this upgrade is going to entail six lights to start with. Um, I'm hoping that will be enough. Fortunately, I have the luxury of being able to raise and lower my lights. And initially, we're going to keep uh, several of the Kessels up there as well. That will aid in the acclimation process. Anytime you make a lighting change, you kind of got to take it slowly. Um, so, these lights will be ramped up slowly over the course of weeks, getting to their 
peak number, wherever that might be, and at the same time we'll be reducing the power of the castles and ultimately with the goal of weaning ourselves off of the castles. Uh, but we also got to decide that you know six is going to be enough and play with different layouts. So, uh, without further ado, uh, first we're going to talk about the GHL Micro. Uh, this is the LX7206. Um, these are German-made lights from GHL, um, and uh, do a little unboxing here. Of course, you got your basic setup part stuff. Um, we have our power supply driver. Here. We've got all nifty little waterproof connections there. Or I should say water resistant. I don't think anything in this industry is truly really wa um, waterproof, but set that there. We've got a trusted power cord. We've got a USB cable. Um, this comes in handy for initial setup um, and programming depending on how you set it up. Now these lights have Wi-Fi built in. So you actually connect them to your network and you can connect to them remotely through their application as well as through the cloud and um, the application or the cloud can be used to program the lights. Um, which is nice because via the cloud uh, you can use your app, on your, or you can use a web browser on your smartphone, use your computer, your Windows system, your Mac, whatever it may be. Um, now we'll talk a little bit about the lights themselves. You'll notice there's six separate clusters here. Um, each cluster has nine separate channels. There's a couple uh, blues, royal blues, a few different white spectrums. Uh, you've got a UV spectrum. Uh, there's red spectrum, green spectrum. There's a total of nine channels per puck. Um, and these lights can peak out at about 195 watts. These are very, very powerful lights. Um, and they, they claim to be comparable to about a 400 watt metal halide. I tend to believe it. Um, having run LEDs for a lot of years, um, you know, I've, I've seen um, the spread that lights put out. I've used these lights before um, and had other lights to compare it to, and they really do put out a lot of light. Um, and because of the puck layout or the cluster layout, these lights put out a very, very respectable spread for such a small, compact fixture. Um, you'll see here, there's a couple of fans on the top. These things do run silent, um, but they do have fans for um, active cooling. We've got your little USB port there, there's a reset port there, and then of course we've got our little mounting points here, um, which we'll get to. Um, in my case, this install is going to entail a setup of custom mounting brackets, um, as well as some off-the-shelf stuff, which we'll get to next. But in a nutshell, that is our GHL Maestro. We've got a half a dozen of these. The next step that we're going to have is going to be setting them up um, for mounting over the tank, which is going to involve putting our brackets and stuff on. So with that, we'll move on to our next step. GHL is widely recognized for the most reliable and future-proof aquarium controllers, dosers, and aquarium LED lighting on the market. Designed and manufactured in Germany, all GHL products are built with the highest quality and standards. The GHL Profilux 4 raises the bar to a whole new level. Featuring built-in Wi-Fi, the Profilux 4 can be connected to your network wirelessly and be monitored and controlled from anywhere. With integrated ports for temperature, pH, ORP, conductivity, you can monitor virtually anything. Built-in expansion ports and optional flow sensors allow the Profilux 4 to scale to meet the needs of even the most advanced aquarium installations without the need for additional add-on modules. The new GHL Doser 2.1 takes dosing to the extreme with integrated Wi-Fi for wireless management. It includes inputs for level sensors, a temperature probe, and an output for a magnetic stirrer, making it an ideal solution for everything from dosing, automatic top-off, automated water changes, and even automated feeding. The GHL Mitras are the most powerful and flexible LEDs in their class. The 7206's built-in wireless control makes for fast and easy setup, while the GHL Light Composer allows users to easily set up their spectrum and lighting schedule. Six individual LED clusters provide the industry's best blending of LED channels while also providing the best spread. 
Nine channels of control allow you to tailor your lighting scheme to meet the needs of even the most difficult to keep corals while also bringing out colors in corals and fish that would otherwise remain unseen. All GHL products can be controlled via the GHL Control Center application as well as the My GHL Cloud interface, allowing for monitoring, control, and management from anywhere via an internet connection. The unique interface eliminates the need for coding while providing advanced programming functionality unrivaled by the competition. If you're looking for the best controllers, dosers, and lighting on the market, then GHL has a product to fit your needs. For more information, visit AquariumComputer.com. Aquarium LED mounts manufactures revolutionary articulating mounts for the most popular LED fixtures and pendants. Their unique patent-pending design allows for full articulation of the light. You can rotate the fixture 360 degrees while also tilting it in any direction in order to maximize coverage while reducing shadowing and light bleed onto the viewing panels. They are designed to be used in conjunction with canopies, light racks, and light bars, but can also be adapted for use with light mount arms. The kit includes all the hardware needed to attach to your favorite LED fixtures. Aquarium LED mounts offers articulating mounts for many popular fixtures such as the GHL Mitra's LX series, Kessel 350, Kessel 360, and AP700 fixtures as well as Ecotex Radeon, AI Hydra 52, and AI Soul fixtures. Custom mounting adapters for other fixtures can be produced upon request. For more information, check out AquariumLEDMounts.com Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is MyFishTank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. All right, so next step is getting these things ready to mount to the light rack. And uh, my mounting setup, as you may recall or as you may not know, I have an aluminum light rack in my um, lighting soffit over the tank. Um, and I use mounts that allow me to angle the lights and direct the light where I need it the most. This helps eliminate shadowing. It also helps with my spread and it helps to focus the light you know, where I need it on the corals and not on the glass. So um, this is going to entail the use of some off-the-shelf stuff as well as some custom stuff. Um, to begin with, this is an articulating light mount from Aquarium LED mounts. Um, this is one for the uh, GHL Mitras. I use the same ones for my Kessels as well um, from that company. Um, so we've got our bracket here, there's some spacers to mount it to the light, um, and then of course our articulating mount. So in addition to this, I need to mount these to my light rack, and I've come up with a couple things. Um, in the past, I used these with the Kessels as well. These little clamps here will allow me to mount our articulating piece here to this little device here. I've had these made by my metal shop. Um, these will screw on there. There's little pins in the back, which you can see. Uh, but this will screw here. And then this will clamp onto my light rack, allowing me to mount the lights around the perimeter. On the peninsula side of the tank, because I have sweet sea swirls on the end, I'm going to mount two of these lights across the light rack, so I've come up with these brackets here that will effectively allow me to suspend the light between the framing. So this will sit up there, these little clamps, when you screw them, they will clamp to extru the extrusions on the light rack, and then again, this little bracket will mount here, allowing me to suspend the light however I need it. And we'll get to that once we get up there, but the first step we've got to do is get our light repaired. So, there's little screws in here, little flathead screws that we'll remove to get to the 
further points for the light box. Reach in here. Grab our little spacers so we can mount the aquarium LED mount Sorry, brackets. Wow, Alexa doesn't know. So we'll take our little spacer there. This allows the fans to operate properly without having this bracket impeding on their flow. So we'll find a little mount there. Get that one started. Have our other little spacer, our other little screw, put that in place. So now we've got our mount, articulating mount on the lights. Uh, and we've got these little mounts here. These will clamp onto our little ball there. And you can change this button piece and, of course, angle your lights any which way you please. So for our purpose right now, we'll take that off. Um, and four of these. One, two, three. Well, two of these are going to have to mount to this. I've already got some up there because so we'll be removing some castles. So, go into our little bag of tricks here. Find some screws. And we will mount our button device to our bracket. Other screw hole there. So they have it. This piece clamps on like so. Should put that way. for now and this will allow us to basically go up to our light rack attach that to the light rack put this one through the top and screw it on probably we can hold it in place next step will be to mount a couple of our little buttons to these pieces here and uh, go ahead and do that the next step will be to take all the lights into the aquarium room and uh, start prepping our light rack for the mounting. So stay tuned, I'm gonna jump ahead here and prep the rest of the lights and we'll carry on in the fish room in just a few minutes.